Despite Sonic's popularity in video games and cartoons, he has not seen a feature film. Well, that all changed on November 2019. I mean February 2020, which saw the release of the first Sonic film. Directed by newcomer director Jeff Fowler, the movie was initially met with heavy criticism with the infamous first trailer that I swear was heralding the end of times, but it was more warmly received later with the next trailer after Tyson Hess of Sonic Media fame came in and made Sonic pleasant to eyeballs everywhere. So the film's out, I saw it, the nostalgia critic was at my showing for reasons not known to mortal men, and now I'm gonna review it. So without further ado, let's big the cat into the Sonic movie. Get a load of this! With Sonic and Eggman being video game icons that are known to people who don't even play video games, it's important to make sure their big screen debuts are done right. We already had a fiasco of the design of Sonic, but even so, the writing on Sonic and Eggman is well done. Sonic is the snarky, quick mouthed dork he's known as from the video games, complemented with an excellent vocal performance by the awesome Ben Schwartz, who I know for voicing Leonardo in Rise of the TMNT and Dewey from DuckTales 2017, both of which are blue characters, along with Sonic. Coincidence? No, it's not. As for Eggman, being played by Jim Carrey is gonna make him more Jim Carrey than in the video games, but I still quite like this interpretation of Eggman. Translation for the simpletons out there, he's more insane and kooky in this movie than in the video games, and that's okay, since he's a funny character. I also like his henchman, Agent Stone, who had some golden interactions with the manly egg. As for Tom the Donut Lord, whose dentist calls him Tim, played by that one guy from Hop, I like him. He has good chemistry of basically every character, in Robotnik, Sonic, and his wife. That's right, I said white. No stupid trying to impress the girl subplot, just a wholesome supportive marriage between the two. Get a load of this! Sonic is known for snarky one-liners and quips, so comedy is going to be imported to a Sonic film. And how did they handle it? Well, comedy is subjective, so that's for you to decide, but for me, I like the jokes in this movie. There are even a few laugh out loud moments for me. I even got a kick out of the Olive Garden product placement jokes, which I wasn't annoyed by since the context of the scene is very jokey and didn't all feel like a serious plot point in Power Rangers 2017. I also didn't mind Sonic flossing, since that's totally in character for him. Get a load of this! We have good jokes and likable characters, but this movie has an extra special ingredient to add to the quality soup, and that's care. There's a clear effort being put into the simple cash grab to make it not feel like a simple cash grab. Yeah, the original Sonic design, which I dubbed the Manhog, was not very good, but they changed it, giving us a very expressive Sonic that conveys emotions well. There's a scene in the baseball field that shows off the effort well, where Sonic is having goofy fun, and then realizes he has no one to share the fun with. A scene that wouldn't work half as well if Sonic wasn't this adorable ball of adorableness, or if Ben Schwartz hadn't done a strong vocal performance. Get a load of this! Overall, I like the Sonic movie a lot. Is it perfect? Hell no. But it's still fun for the family, it's fun for Sonic fans, and maybe even an average moviegoer. If you don't like it, that's cool. All I ask is that you don't be a jerk about not liking it. Now if you excuse me, I'm gonna think about the horrific picture of Doug Walker I took after the Sonic movie while finishing up the next review.